Good afternoon, everyone. Um, today I will try to uh, um, introduce you um, briefly to this uh, lately so famous industry on the semiconductors. Um, I will start really from uh, top uh, view, and then I will go narrow on how we use NIME in general, and finally I will introduce the use case. It's different setup from the previous question, previous presentation, because we are not doing, I'm not going to enter in a lot of technical details on what we do, uh, but actually just to show one use case uh, on how to use NIME for uh, prototype uh, a new product. Um, uh, if we can start the video, this will introduce what is the purpose of SML in itself. Today, his parents don't care about our critical dimensions or overlay calculations. And her daughter has no idea. In her hand, she's holding a million tiny transistors. And her best friend doesn't realize that she helps push technology forward. Just like most people will never know, the technology they enable can save lives. Because seeing your son make an impact on the world is what matters. As for her, she's no longer worried about her English class. Made possible by our anonymous heroes. It's in these moments that we find our purpose. To push technology to new limits and make the seemingly impossible possible. Unlocking the potential within everyone. We are ASML. So th this is who we are um, and um, basically uh, from a general perspective, if we also look in in what we are number-wise, also will give you an insight. I promise only three uh, short videos today, one minute each, but just to uh, realize what, what SML is doing and why it's relevant uh, to use NIME. One extra thing, maybe at the end of the, pre of the presentations in the question section, I, I will have time to also give some goodies. Uh, uh, so please pay attention to the numbers. Uh, here. So please start the video. Um, ASML is, is a company that uh, we have uh, in 2022 approximately a net sales of uh, 21 billion euros. Um, it's a growing number in the last three years. Pandemic was quite good for us. Um, we are uh, selling around 350 so systems per year, which is not a lot in principle, but when you ask for the price tag of each system, then you start to realize the size. 40,000 employees almost this year. We, uh, we are going to finish uh, with 3,000 more employees this year also, over the ones you see there. And we expand approximately the same amount of money like some countries' budget on research and development. So for us, being able to innovate is very important. And uh, we really like uh, to stress that any tool, any service, anyone that likes to, to help that process is, is welcome. So in the um, if next one, yeah. We also appear sometimes in the, in, the, um, in the news. So it's not only us talking about us. And lately, some of you have, may have heard about all this uh, geopolitical uh, situation. And, but the key are the machines that we build. So to understand what we do, I, I like also to hear how CNBC talks about what SML does, because so far you have here, which is our purpose, what are, is our value. But what we really do is very well explained by these journalists. Please. At the center of this big factory in the Netherlands, in the midst of a months-long assembly process, there's a revolutionary machine that the whole world has come to rely on. You could see an EUV machine right behind me. The size of a city bus, but working with atomic level precision, these EUV lithography machines are the most expensive step in making every advanced microchip that powers the modern digital age. Data centers, cars, and every single iPhone. We are the only provider on the planet of this critical technology. 
These machines are the only way to print minuscule designs on these chips. They cost up to $200 million, and they're only made by a single company, Advanced Semiconductor Materials Lithography, or ASML. Today, ASML has a monopoly on the fabrication of UV lithography machines, the most advanced type of lithography equipment that's needed to make every single advanced processor chip that we use today. And this company is one of the most extraordinary organizations in the world. The machines that they produce, each one of them is among the most complicated devices ever made. In the midst of a chip shortage that's caused backorders of everything from PS5s to Teslas, the need for ASML has never been higher. Its stock has skyrocketed since 2018, while its three main customers, chipmakers TSMC, Intel, and Samsung, vie to be front of line for ASML's next breakthrough technology. The price tag for this next machine, which promises to push the boundaries of known physics, is more than $300 million. It's so expensive that... We kind of stop it now. What's really going on inside the quiet company making the machines that print them all? Okay, so... This more or less uh, explains the type of machines we do. Uh, at the end, what we do is we use light to burn a resistor on top of a wafer. And uh, this is one of the steps of the lithography process. And you could start to imagine that when you do things on nanometers or nanosecond, you generate quite a lot of data. And, and this is how we started to use uh, NIME in our company. Um, we, uh, uh, somewhere six years ago, I, uh, I have uh, to go to Asia to help a customer uh, solving a, a problem in the behavior of the software of one of those machines. And we generated the, in order of, of uh, a few terabytes of data. And of course, I cannot analyze that manually. Didn't have anything else, so I just started downloading the name at the customer office and uh, we start to process and we successfully develop our own diagnostic tool at that time. So, as a grassroots initiative with our employees, I, we started to spread the word and more people start to, to connect with, the, with us and with the tool. And um, nowadays, uh, the low-code uh, uh, tool that NIPE represents is really, really recognized by a large community in SML. This um, is completely different from digital uh, adoption approaches, where people just uh, plan the adoption of the tool selects. Uh, in the 14,000 employees, uh, we, we have a lot of very clever minds, uh, and um, everyone likes to work in their own way. So, so in general, uh, the competition is very tough. We, we can uh, um, afford to use different tools, and NIME is making by itself its own, its own way there. So it's good news. Um, it's not only d and &E or research and development where we use it. We also have uh, NIME in uh, almost all other uh, clusters and groups, like HR, finance, uh, supply chains management, and a very, very long, etc. cetera. And uh, people uh, um, uh, always highlight that the um, the low barrier to start using it is a key, but also the avoiding repetitive tasks, like uh, avoiding uh, using Excel, for instance, uh, in, in some cases, it helps them a lot. For more nerd-like uh, people, the people that are more techy, uh, what we really appreciate is the fastest ways to prototype. So, and that's what you are going to see in the next slide, where, uh, where, where I will introduce this use case that we have developed. Last November, we went to Semicon Europa, which is one of the main fairs that, uh, for the semiconductor industry, and we presented um, this prototype that you are seeing there. Uh, what you see is, is, is already a simple uh, the picture of a wafer. A wafer is where we uh, uh, project the the, um, the actual, uh, sorry, one too fast, where we project the actual uh, uh, light to create the, the, the chips. And um, basically, uh, uh, when you do that, um, occasionally, not a lot, uh, we have sometimes that we have uh, to measure if there is contamination inside these tools. And uh, to measure that, the actual process is we extract one of these wafers, we place it in another tool, and then we analyze it. And while we are doing that, a lot of other wafers are being exposed. If 
after the analysis, we realized that something went wrong, there was contamination, then we need to scrap all of those wafers. For a reference, you can imagine one of these wafers uh, is quite expensive in the order of the hundreds of thousands of euros each. So we, we thought, is there anything else we can do? Well, the, the answer was actually into the uh, using an alternative approach. Inside the, uh, the scanners, inside the lithography machines, we already have uh, sensors. A lot of sensors that are also based on light, so they are quite precise also. And then it, um, we thought maybe we can improve the resolution of these sensors using machine learning or artificial intelligence. And then they, uh, that's what we did. We basically say, OK, can we do the analysis inside the machines? And, um, measuring in line. That, in that case, really save all those 10 wafers that we need to scrap because we didn't analyze further. Doing that uh, took a team approximately uh, uh, one week of work, and then we basically prototype a data, data application that you see there uh, uh, where you could select the different uh, wafers in that case, and you stack the information of the contamination that we detect with this sensor, and, and you create this kind of heat map. The other, uh, the other case I already mentioned, uh, this is using the NIME uh, web portal for the prototype. The other use case I mentioned is the one inside where we use it, uh, an algorithm called uh, DBScan that automatically clusters the contaminations and help us uh, to identify which is, the, which is the root cause of the, of, the, of the contamination source, which, of course, also save a lot of times. When, when this is happening, you need to uh, figure out yourself or context yourself that we are in a, in a fab that is running production full time, 24 hours per day. So any travel that we have is a lot of reliability impact and availability impact. So it's important to go very fast to the, to the root cause. Another place where it also helps, we can now run this uh, contamination detection. We can also run it inside the, the machine. So even when you are installing the machines, you can also detect if there are things you need to do and then reduce the installation time. Now, going outside the lithography process and more into the NIME uh, uh, side of the story, um, I said one week uh, for developing the prototype of a product. That's really, uh, really fast, right? So, of course, we still need to have to do a lot of other things to productize. And now the NIME Hub uh, is also promising that we can productize, oh, sorry, we can productize faster. But um, introducing machine learning or uh, different workflows of artificial intelligence as products in a standard industry and very conservative industry as uh, the lithography industry is, is really, uh, really useful. You can also deploy uh, continuously. You have uh, uh, your application is web-based, meaning that you can access from the phone, you can access from the laptops. So for us, it's, it's also a way to get a very friendly user interface very quick. And uh, end of the day, it still prevents a lot of waste and scrap and rework, which is at the end the goal of our business to help our customers and improve the processes they have there. So, um, if you are interested, uh, you can follow us, learn more about SML. We supply always with a, a QR code at the end of the presentations. And now I will make, uh, as, pro as promised, uh, one question. We have this. This nice thing is here. Uh, you can win uh, now. One is a water bottle recyclable to reduce also the plastic. Uh, and we also have this, uh, it's called Mr. Bio. <laughs> it's a hub for cables. So you can, uh, if you, if anyone answers the right question, uh, sorry, answers correctly the question. I will make, I will, they can choose uh, from one of those. So the, the question is, is quite easy. Um, how we advance society as a company, as a male? We say it in the very first slide. No? Nobody tries? Yeah, there is one hand there.
I'm going to go wild ass guess <clears throat> by empowering people to be the best of themselves. Sorry? By empowering people to be the, make the best of themselves. <laughs> you will get the present anyhow, but no, it's one nanometer at a time. Ah. <laughs> it's okay. But so that's you can the measure. Choose, you, right, okay. You can choose. Uh, the, they have. Uh, okay. Uh, a little bit uh, um, m more difficult question, because this, even you are a data scientist, you still need to remember how many people we are going to be in end of 2023. Anyone remember? <laughs> now there is another one there, sorry. Yeah, please. Um, 40,000. Well, it's a still okay, good answer. In the pictures you saw that end of 2023. 39,000. We were 39, but I did ask how many we are going to be. And I, then I also said, we are hiring more or less 3,000 people per year, so we will 40. be 42,000, luckily. Uh, anyhow, you have your present. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and even making it uh, a, a, a little bit uh, more difficult, uh, uh, this one is, is, uh, is a question. Uh, what do you think is the... This is, was not in the presentation, but just to, to make uh, the question to the audience. What do you think we, uh, we, need, uh, we have the strongest challenge ourselves as a company? What do you think we, where, where we struggle the more? And there is no totally right or wrong answer on this, just opinions. There is one there. I guess like you were uh, talking about like the waste of, I mean, uh, not getting your, like, each of your semiconductors are so expensive, and so not letting them go waste is, I think, the more crucial for your own company. And also, like, the global geospatical data that you're talking about, the ongoing thing, I think uh, creating demand also and creating the supply to your own customers and creating yeah. that should be the... Uh, yeah, actually, we have this, uh, this rich kids problem that our problem is not to sell, but actually to be able to supply. So indeed, that's one of the problems we have right now, the, the demand from all of us. We are always wanting more and more devices, computers, servers, applications, crunching data. This generates a demand in our customers, and that demand grows faster than the way we can produce. Not even us and the other competitors together, we are able to serve the market. So that's, that's indeed so very good, uh, very good answer. Uh, thanks a lot. Okay, I think uh, uh, time-wise we are getting close to the, um, to the last 10 minutes for the, for the questions, because I already made questions to you, now you also have your chance to make your questions. Now it's your chance. <laughs> you had your opportunity to ask questions of them, but now you have any questions for Ignacio also. Thank you very much for the presentation. Thanks. Any questions? I'm, oh, there's one. Someone could get the microphone there. Hi, it's not a technical question. It's more the video describes that you dominate the market for the creation of this stuff. I mean, that's the kind of phrase that's implied. I'm, I'm not quite sure what the total size of the market is. But to what extent do you deal with the political pressures of such either monopolistic or oligopolistic positioning? So I have two ways of answering the one that, um, that I should give you to you. Is, um, that's a very good question for a coffee later. <laughs> because I, I like to keep my job after. <laughs> uh, what is also safe to answer is we are a company in Europe. We comply with the rules and the laws in Europe. If the rules and the laws are updated, we will for sure comply with them. <laughs> oh, is there, there's another question. Run, run. <laughs> Thank you. Very, mine is very technical, very simple. You are reducing the nanometer, 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 but where are you going to go? <laughs> the short the question, there are physical limits, 
uh, on the tens of picometers, uh, so 12 zeros, that so far nobody know yet how to go further. But it's also true that there is a, and uh, just three weeks ago, more uh, the former president of Intel passed away. He, he had a law called the Moore Law that says that every 18 months, he did a very good prediction, this is good for a data science uh, presentation, that every 18 months the industry was able to shrink by two the size of the same kind of computation. So some people, which is not the president of my company, they, they question if this is still true. What we see, still see, is that our machines at least are still going to be able to deliver this shrink. Then it's not only a technical matter, but also economical question for our customers if they will be interested in doing this. Because the, the more we shrink, the bigger the machines, the more expensive, and the larger the fabs, and the larger the energy consumption. So, you got, thanks, thanks to you. Any other question? Looking around, trying to see. Here. Oh, I'm getting whistled at, so yeah, there's, there's gotta be a oh. question. <laughs> Hiya. I, so, can, I, I cannot see you all, ah, oh, yes, there you are. I used to work for um, one of your customers, and um, so I used to analyze a lot of the data coming from your tools using them, so it was pretty cool. But I guess I always wondered, there was always restrictions around the, the testing of the wafers themselves, and it can be quite intrusive. Um, did you ever think about image analytics as a potential measure to catch this, the kind of defects that you're talking about? <clears throat> Sorry, I couldn't. Uh, can you rephrase again? Sure. Did you ever look at? Did you ever look at image analytics? Are we able to what analytics? Sorry. Uh, image analytics. You know, for for looking at images. Yeah. No. Image analytics. Yeah. So from images. Ah, image analytics. Yes, yes. So what what you see there is one of the prototypes we did using. Um, uh, K nearest neighbor type of algorithms, but um, we also use uh, in other prototypes the nine nodes for image recognition, and um, uh, we uh, basically struggle with the amount of data we supply and the resolution because the picture you saw there is a four gigabytes image. So when we tried to use the algorithms of NIME for image recognition, though they were effective and sometimes recognized the shapes, they were not as precise as the method that we are doing there. I'm not getting into the details on what precisely we did there because it's not only the machine learning algorithm that we did, but it's quite large, the size of the Scola wafer map, which basically has the topography of the wafer, and we need to do other operations, not only, you can only, you can not only get uh, an understanding of the contamination that you have by a 2D image uh, recognition, you actually need also some 3D uh, uh, features from the wafer map. Cool, thank you. Thanks.